So the game I'm playing today is called Everyday Shooter. This game, as its title sort of implies, is a twin-stick shooter, a very abstract one at that. As a matter of fact, it kind of bears some similarities to Yeppe Carlson's game Thoth. Yeah, we're taking a look at another oldie today, guys. A retro indie game, I guess you could say. Well, I guess retro is not the best term for it, because this didn't come out in the 80s or 90s. This was initially released exclusively for the PlayStation 3 back in 2007, and it was ported to other platforms eventually. It saw a release on both the PC and PlayStation Portable in 2008. I believe this game is also playable on the Vita via backwards compatibility, because as far as my knowledge goes, it was never officially released on the Vita. Now this game has a bit of an interesting story behind it. It was originally developed by just one guy, an indie dev from Canada by the name of Jonathan Mack. Everyday Shooter's development began shortly after he had scrapped one of his previous projects known as Gate 88. Gate 88 was canned because, according to Jonathan Mack himself, the game was just a complete mess of mechanics and controls, so ultimately he decided to ditch the project in favor of creating something less innovative but ultimately more fun to play. And this new project eventually became Everyday Shooter. Early on in the game's development, Mack had submitted Everyday Shooter into the 2007 Independent Games Festival, where it ultimately ended up winning winning three awards. Interestingly enough, there was a major AAA publisher that took notice of Max game almost immediately. That publisher was Sony. Sony had approached Mac offering a deal to publish Everyday Shooter on the PlayStation 3, which Mac ultimately accepted, and eventually the game was released exclusively for the PS3 in October of 2007. So yes, this is in fact a Sony game, because I believe Sony owns part of the Everyday Day Shooter IP, but what's kind of bizarre is that it got a PC port, which is something that you pretty much never see with Sony games. But if I had to guess, I would say that Sony probably gave Mac permission to release Everyday Shooter on PC, because I mean, he's still the creator of the game at the end of the day. But the fact that this game is playable on PC, considering Sony technically owns it, I don't know, it feels a little bit surreal to me. Now, Everyday Shooter is another one of those games that kind of falls into the category of indie games that were very popular at the time of their release, but pretty much fell off the radar not too long after. And I can think of plenty of games I've already covered on my channel that fit this definition pretty well, in my opinion, because there were a bunch of pretty high-ranking news outlets covering this game, even news outlets that don't traditionally cover games, so again, it's just like Devil's Tuning Fork. So despite its age, I still wanted to show you guys this game today because it's a pretty neat little shoot-em-up for what it is. It's not the best shoot-em-up I've ever played, but it's still pretty solid. Now, Everyday Shooter is not the most expansive game in the world. It only has about eight stages. Normal play is the default game mode in which you play all eight stages in order. Single play is where you can play individual stages. However, you need to unlock them first by collecting points. If I go down to this third option right here, you see it's called Unlock Extras, so we can enter this screen for just a moment. So throughout the course of the game, you'll be able to collect what's called unlock points, and you can use these in order to unlock various things in the game, but you can also use it to purchase certain items. For instance, your starting lives right here. Normally, you start with only three lives, but you can increase this to five. Well, I think you can actually increase it to more than five lives, but right now I don't have enough unlock points to do that. But you also have all these other options here. You have shuffle mode, which I'll get into later on. You have all of these effects that you can unlock, like painter effect, sketchy effect, single shade effect, contrast, inverter, and bit reduce. These effects will apply different shaders to the game screen. I only have one of them unlocked right now, which is the contrast effect, which I think I'll demonstrate near the end of the video. And then you have the actual levels right here that you can unlock in single play. As you can see, you need unlock points in order to actually make them available in single play, except for this level right here, which you need to actually reach in normal mode before you can unlock it. All the other ones are available to you from the get-go. There's also another option here called Notes, but I'll also explain what this is later on. And Settings is just self-explanatory, it's an options menu. So we'll start this video off by going to Normal Play first. Now there is an intro cutscene that play is when you start up Normal Play. 
I have no idea what it means. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it means absolutely nothing because it just looks like, uh... It, it looks like the old, uh, alchemy visualizer from the old Windows Media Player. That's basically what it is. I mean, it means pretty much nothing. But after that weird cutscene, you get dropped into the actual game. So, you press up, left, down, and right to move, and WASND to shoot, so this game basically plays like, I, I guess, Robotron 2084? Yeah, it has that style of, uh, controls, which is, uh, I don't know, I, I guess a bit counterintuitive for a twin-stick shooter, but basically, uh, it, it, it's fine, by the way. I mean, it's, it's not something that I'm really used to, but, I mean, it's not impossible to control. I mean, to, to be honest, I would still say that Bit Trip Fade is way more awkward than this. Like, it has a way more awkward control scheme when it comes to first-person shoot- uh, not first-person shooters. What am I talking about? Twin-stick shooters. Okay, so things that are exploding will not hurt me. So that is- that is correct. So you can't get hurt by explosions here. Now, I- I should explain what the hell is going on because things are kind of happening pretty quickly here. So the first level we have here is called Robot. Now, you have all of these robots that are just moving around the screen. You have to shoot them and they will die. Now, you also have these squares over here that will explode when you shoot them. And the direction that they move in when you shoot them depends on, well, where your bullet was coming from. So, for instance, if you're firing at them from the right... Okay, I didn't even do anything there and it just blew up. So, I guess it must have just, uh... It must have ran right into the explosion. So, yeah, it... it the, uh, direction in which they... In which they move when you shoot them depends on... Yeah, depends on which direction in which you shoot them. So, if I come at them from the... The left, then they will move to the left. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It kind of reminds me of, uh... It kind of reminds me of Every Extend Extra, actually. And I do believe that was one of the inspirations for Everyday Shooter. I think Mac had said that one of his inspirations for... I, I don't think just Everyday Shooter, but also for just, uh... Making games in general was Every Extend Extra. Like, after he abandoned Gate 88, he wanted to create a new game... Uh, kind of based around some of the games that Q Entertainment were releasing at the time, like Every Extend Extra and Luminous, but eventually he just decided to go with uh, creating a shooter instead, like a twin stick shooter, more akin to, I, I guess, Kenta Choa's shoot em ups in a way. Oh my god, dude, there's so many chains that I'm getting here, for goodness sakes. Mac has also cited Kenta Cho as being a huge inspiration for him making uh, shoot em ups as well, like Everyday Shooter. One of the inspirations he cited in an old interview that he did was Parsec 47, which I did do a video on my channel a pretty long time ago. I mean, I don't really see the resemblance to Parsec 47 here. Like I said, this reminds me a lot more of Every Extent Extra, but those are kind of the games that led Jonathan Mack to wanting to create Everyday Shooter or games like it. So he was heavily inspired by like Q Entertainment or Omega because uh, that's the uh, moniker of the guy who made it every extend. Well, anyway, uh, that was the end of the first level. I didn't even get to explain what the hell was going on there, but yeah, basically you shoot those bombs and the way that the explosions work in this game is that when an enemy gets caught up in an explosion, they too will explode, and you can cause massive chain reactions that way. So that's how the explosions work in this game. But now we're on the second level, which is called Root of the Heart. So what you have here is that you have these networks of enemies, and what you gotta do is that you have to try and destroy the large enemies. As you can see, they're just kind of like weird... We weird masses, they don't have like any any real form whatsoever. But if you leave them alone for too long, they will eventually start to grow. And also, I am like screwing this up massively right here. But yeah, if you leave them alone for too long, they will begin to grow large in size. So what you want to do is that you want to try and destroy the larger enemies because that will cause a chain reaction of explosions. Because as you can see, they're all connected to each other. So when one of the networks blows up, it basically causes all of the other networks to get destroyed as well. So you want to cause as big of an explosion as you can. I just ran right into that bullet. I even looked at it and just, I, it didn't stop me from being an idiot and destroying myself. So when you get to a certain score, you will receive an extra life. 
So the first life that you get comes at a score of 200, the second life at 600, and then the third life at 1200. Just for the record, I've never been able to beat this game, or at least I haven't been able to so far. The furthest I was able to get in this game when I was playing it off screen was level 5. Now, the color of the enemies also kind of tells you what sort of bullets that they fire. So these green enemies will fire these, like, fast-moving bullets. The purple enemies will try to fire lasers at you. As you can see, there's a crosshair right here, and they will try to target you. So you don't want to be within their line of fire, otherwise you will get destroyed. And then the orange enemies fire these, like, slow-moving bullets right here. They only fire, like, one at a time. They're very slow-moving and are overall pretty easy to dodge. I'm gonna try and get a chain going right here. There we go, very nice. Watch everything explode. Also, the music in this game I absolutely love. What is interesting is that the game is comprised of just one instrument, an acoustic guitar. And even though it's only one instrument, it's surprisingly catchy. Like, I absolutely love the music in this game. Especially the uh, main theme of the level that we're coming up to next, which I believe is called... Uh, oh yeah, there we go. There, everything's just exploding. Yeah, the next level is called, uh, Lush Look Killer, and I absolutely love this damn music that plays in this level. Oh my god. Because it's really funky. I like that, that funky rhythm that it's got going right here. So this is kind of like a boss, so you have these giant robots that you need to destroy, and you have this gigantic eye in the center. Now as the robots enter the eye, it will cause the eye to grow, and that's obviously not what you want. You don't want it to grow, because then it's going to open up and then it's going to start attacking you. But then, then you can start attacking it, and of course I had to run right into a freaking eye. Oh my god. So yeah, you have these, uh, gigantic eyes right here that are glowing. These ones will explode when you destroy them. Again, you can cause a chain reaction that way. These eyes that are turning red right here, so they're basically attacking you, or they're, or they're basically, uh, being controlled under the influence of the eye, or the lush look killer, I guess you could say. So they will try to target you directly. The other eyes just kind of wander around aimlessly, but that still kind of makes them difficult to avoid, because you can't really predict their movements. At least, at least with the ones that are targeting you directly, you can predict their movements, because they're trying to come directly at you. So you have to uh, try and destroy these robots. The ones that are gigantic, and the ones that are flashing, I think those are the ones that you have to go for, because they will explode and they can destroy the other robots around them. So, this game is all about causing chain reactions, that's pretty much what you have to do. It's kind of like every extend extra in that regard. Cause the largest chain reactions that you possibly can while picking up points. Oh my god, okay, I just wanna like leave. I just wanna leave, oh my god. Okay, get that explosion, I don't think that did anything. Oh my god. Get something destroyed, please. Okay, thank you very much. Oh my god, how did I... How did I avoid all of you guys? Okay, get this. Get this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so if you destroy them in the chain, then they will drop even more points. Now we're on to the third phase of this fight. So as you can see, all the robots are actually coming from just one direction. They are feeding the eye. Feeding the Lush Look Killer. I'm just gonna go around the other side. If I can destroy this big robot right here... Yeah, so, in the third phase, when you destroy one of the flashing robots, it actually causes all of them to blow up. It doesn't do that in the other phases, as far as I'm aware. Oh my god, I should probably go and, uh, pick up all these points. Yeah, if you take too long to, uh, pick up some of these points, they will eventually disappear. They'll just fade away. Oh my god. Yeah, this, this level requires quite a bit of concentration here. There we go. That was a pretty good chain right there. So also take note of the points that are flashing, because the flashing points will actually award you more. Like, they're actually worth more. Some of them are worth three, and I think other flashing points are actually worth six. I think in the fifth level in particular, they, they're worth six, if I'm not mistaken. So right here we have to, uh, we're on the fourth phase. Gotta try and find the flashing robot, because when we destroy him, again, it blows up all the other ones. We have to prevent the other eyes from growing, because there's multiple eyes now, so we have to destroy one of them, and they drop a whole bunch of points. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh my god, get away from me, boys. Get away from me, boys. Oh god, why is the game freaking out? Why is the game freaking out? Because I'm, I'm also freaking out too. Oh my god. Okay, well, I don't- I'm not sure how I was supposed to avoid that. I'm not sure how I was supposed to escape from that predicament, honestly. Get the eyes out of here. Oh my god. Why are you going back under the influence of them? Yeah, this is- this is one of the harder levels in the game, I will- I will admit. But, you gotta just try- okay, well, at least they're- they've gone back to sleep. They've gone back to sleep, so I can at least get another life up. Good. Now the next life is at 2,000. Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Where's- where's the flashing one? Okay, it's not even giving me a flashing robot this time. 
The song is almost done, and you can see uh, the progress of the song at the bottom of the screen. You might have noticed that there is a meter that's uh, slowly moving at the bottom of the screen that shows you uh, the current duration of the song or the progress of the song. So once it gets all the way to the right, then that means the song will end and we will go on to the next level. What's also pretty cool about the game's soundtrack is that it's kind of procedurally generated as well, because whenever you destroy an enemy, it actually causes a note to play. It causes a note from the acoustic guitar to play, so in a way, the music in this game is kind of procedurally generated, like you can create music on the fly by destroying enemies. I especially like the music here in Porcos in the Sky. I don't know about you, but I get like those... I don't know, I get like REM vibes from the... Uh, from this song in particular. I don't know what it is, oh god, okay, again, I have no idea how I was supposed to avoid that. So yeah, Porco's in the sky, so basically you have what looks like these giant suns, I guess? And that you have to try and destroy. I don't think you actually need to destroy them, but I believe if you want to unlock one of the, uh, one of the painter effects, or I guess one of the, uh, one of the shader effects that you can use on the screen, you have to destroy all three Porcos that appear in this stage. But I've never been able to do it because they are kind of hard to defeat. Okay, why did you guys diverge? Why did you guys diverge? Okay, yeah. So in this level, you have to try and shoot these cubes because they will cause the porcos to burn up. Or actually, no. I don't think that's... Those are the porcos. I think the porcos are, are the giant sun-like enemies. Yeah, also, there's this biplane that comes by later on and tries to shoot you down. So we're kind of like in the sky and we're, we're engaged in a war. We're engaged in a firefight with this freaking biplane over here. The guy who's piloting a biplane doesn't really seem to know how to pilot a plane correctly. It just kind of swerves all over the place. It's possible to destroy the biplane, although it can be kind of hard. He does drop points as you shoot him, though. So this is a game that you where you really need to concentrate. You have to keep moving and firing, and you and you can never really stop at any point, otherwise it, it will pretty much result in your demise. So again, it's it's just like Kenta Cho shoot em ups where you need to keep constantly moving. You can't hesitate at any point, otherwise that will cause you to die. Oh, oh my god, okay, he knew. He knew ex where exactly I was going. I still managed to trick him anyway. Oh, good god. Okay, biplane, get out of here. Get out of here. I know it is possible to destroy the biplane, but I don't think it's actually required. So yeah, you can just lead these guys into uh, the cube, and then you can you can cause them to burn up. Cause them to burn up in the atmosphere. Yes, very very abstract game. I mean, it's not unlike Kenta Cho shoot 'em ups, cause his his shoot 'em ups are also known for being like incredibly abstract in their design. Like they're uh, they're oh my god, I'm trying so hard to concentrate on that freaking biplane, but I think it is leaving now. Okay, we're almost done with this level right here, so. If I can just keep these guys away from me, if I can just push them all back, push them all back. I, I really don't care about the Porco. The Porco can do whatever the hell it wants. I'm just worried about the damn, the damn planes or the, the whatever the hell else. Well, I don't even know what you call these. I, I keep referring to them as Porcos. Okay, well, I'm dead anyway, so. Well, we almost managed to beat that level. We got 1,271 points. My highest score right now is... Yeah, 1,661. So it doesn't matter whether or not you pass or fail normal mode, all of the points that you receive in any mode will still be added to your total number of unlock points, so you'll still receive all of them anyway. So I got 1,271 points, so it's added to my total. Now I have 1,922 remaining. I can also earn unlock points by playing each individual level in single play. And to tell you the truth, there wasn't really that much else to see in Portal in the sky in particular. We almost got to the end of the level, but there really is nothing else to see in that level, because I believe this level goes through three phases. I might as well play it again just to show you guys the remainder of it, because I think you guys still deserve to see it anyway. Besides, I really love the music in this one, because again, it reminds me a lot of Rem. I initially wanted to say it reminded me of Radiohead, but I feel like... I feel like Rem is a better better comparison here. Yeah, it's the kind of it's the kind of like like alternate rock music that I grew up listening to. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. Thread the needle. Thread the frickin' needle. So yeah, we just have to try and destroy these porcos right here. I believe you just need to destroy all three of them in order for one of the effects to get unlocked. I don't remember which one it was exactly. Now you also have these like clouds of smoke as well that you have to shoot. Like, you can't shoot past them. Oh my god! How did I even survive that? 
How did I even survive that? Okay, well, I didn't survive that one because I didn't even see it. Oh, I see, because you were behind the cloud of smoke. You sneaky son of a bitch. Okay, well, I still start with at least five lives this time. Yeah, by the way, it is worth- oh my god, why is the game freaking out? Also, the biplane is back. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that everyday shooter uses what I personally like to call a Super Mario 64 style lives counter. If you have zero lives, it actually counts as having one life. So if the lives counter reads zero, you actually have one life remaining. So it doesn't really count the amount of lives you have left, more so the amount of continues you have. Because Super Mario 64 pretty much had the same style of lives counter. Also, I should probably uh, make an attempt to actually pick up some of the points here. I mean, I can, I can burn these guys up in the atmosphere at the same time. I don't believe these guys can hurt me when they are burning, though. As a matter of fact, just let me, let me confirm the theory right here. You guys can't hurt me, right? No, you can't. Okay, good. Right, and then the Porco comes back. I think this is the third one right here. Yeah, so I think you need to destroy the first two, and then... And then the third one only spawns on the second phase. Okay, get that. Get that. There we go. Very nice. Burn them up. Burn them all up. Wait for the cubes to come around here. Okay, good. Because I can kind of use this as a shield, which is very nice. Very nice indeed. There we go. The Porco just blows up, and it drops a whole slew of points. Very nice indeed, and I did get one of my lives back. So at least that way the Porco can't spawn more of these, I guess, bird enemies, if you could call them that? Yeah, let's call them that for now. Bird enemies. Sure, why not? I didn't even get anywhere close to my previous score, or my previous high score. But there we go, that's just the end of the level, guys. That's the remainder of the level. So as you can see, you still get, uh unlock points from completing the levels in single play as well. You know what, I think I am actually gonna go back to the robot level quickly, just so I can explain this in, uh, in better detail right here, because I wasn't really able to before. So, like I said, the way it works is that you have all these robots flying around the screen, so you also have, uh, these ships that spawn as well, and what these do is that they will just throw out a bunch of bullets. They throw out all sorts of bullets, they're kind of like space stations, that's, that's the best, uh, comparison I can make there. So you have these bombs, like I said, so you push them around, it creates an explosion. Now, what's also useful is that you can shoot the explosions in order to make them larger. So that can also be very useful. As you can see, uh, the explosion actually got a lot larger too. So yeah, when a robot enters the explosion, then they too will also explode, and you can use this in order to cause chain reactions. Again, a lot like every Extend Extra. Also, the music in this level is great as well, just like it is in every single level. Now, another thing that is useful right here is that yes, you can destroy the bullets, and when you destroy the bullets, these will drop the flashing points, which, as I've already mentioned, they give you more unlock points. Okay, so this is actually really good right here, so if I can- if I can- yeah, there we go. There we go. I wanted to shoot it right there because I want to shoot into like a giant cluster of enemies. That was very useful. Very good. There we go. Yeah, so this level is just all about scoring chains, and as you can see, the explosions can also cause the, uh, can also cause the bombs to, uh, detonate as well. I'm not sure why, uh, the robots didn't explode right there. Okay, yeah, I think we just got another one. There we go, you got 49 chains. Oh my god, the chains are still going because there's more enemies that are spawning. Yeah, so you want to destroy these guys while the bullets are flying out, because as soon as they explode, then all of their bullets get converted into points. Unfortunately, they don't get converted into the flashing points. That's the only downside to this. Oh my god. Okay, chain reaction, go! Oh my lord. Massive explosion. Oh my god. X83 chain? No, 105 chains. Yeah, the first level is definitely one of my favorite levels, just because of these, like, giant chain explosions that you can make. Really fun indeed. This is a very fun little game, despite its simplicity. I'm especially surprised that Sony was interested in this, like, Sony actually wanted to pick this game up. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would still say they made a good choice, because this game is still, like, despite its simplicity, it's still, like, an excellent... Excellent shoot 'em up game, excellent twin stick shooter. Like I said, it's not the best in existence, but for what it is, it's still very enjoyable. Maybe not something that you'll you'll be sinking too much time into, but for like maybe a good a good 10 to 20 minutes. Like maybe that's what your average play session will last right here. Okay, last chain reaction. Very nice. I don't think I beat my high score. Yeah, so even as the screen is fading out, you can still pick up points. And the fade out is especially useful on Root of the Heart, because as soon as that level ends, all of the enemy networks explode instantly and they drop a whole slew of points. So if you really wanna if you really wanna push your high score up like instantly, 
then yes, definitely play this level. Also, if you want to get points very quickly too, I would suggest playing Root of the Heart. Or even this level right here, Build 88. Like, if you want to earn unlock points extremely quickly, you should definitely play Build 88 in single play mode in particular. And I might as well show it off, because I haven't actually played this in the video yet. I'm not gonna end this video off without at least showing you guys this level, because this level is also fantastic. And like I said, it's also a fantastic way to get points very quickly. So, you have these orange turrets right here, and you have all of these robots that are setting up the turrets, and these ones will fire bullets extremely quickly, but they also drop an entire slew of flashing points, and these robots right here are trying to, uh, repair the turret right here. Oh my god. I'm trying so hard to concentrate right here. Yeah, you also have all of these tanks. Now, this level is called Build 88. I'm not sure if this is meant to be based on uh, Jonathan Mack's previous title, Gate 88. It might be. It seems to be a reference to that. This is definitely one of the harder levels in the game because the bullets fly at you a lot quicker, but it's also one of the shorter levels. In fact, I think it is the shortest level in the game. Yeah, definitely destroy these networks. And also... What, what is worth noting is that when you pick up an extra life, you are invincible for a short while. So definitely use that to your advantage in this level. Other than that, it's really straightforward. Not that challenging. You also have these other, like, little ships that are just kind of flying around and trying to flank you. The tanks also drop a whole slew of, of points as well, even though they're not the flashing ones, but they still drop them in, like, massive clusters. Yeah, you want to go in and take these ones out, like, immediately. Otherwise, the turrets are probably going to annoy you. I don't even know what these things are, but they explode when you kill them, so that's cool. That's useful indeed. There we go. Get the life up, because at least that way I'm invincible. Yeah, so like I said, this is a great level if you want to if you want to earn unlock points extremely quickly. I'll also show off the contrast thing in uh, just a moment. Yeah, it might have been useful for me to just get rid of all these enemies. Some of the enemies will despawn when you get killed. So that can be useful, so as not to overwhelm you immediately. So that's always a welcome addition. Okay, that was my fault right there, because I ran right into that. I haven't been able to actually beat this level before. I haven't been able to make it to the very end, so let's see if I can- let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. I think these guys only fire shots at you when they have a clear shot on you, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's how the tanks behave. Oh, good lord. Okay, I don't know why the other one blew up, but sure, I'll take it. Fine. Oh my god, boys. Wait, we're almost at the end. I especially like the music right here because this is by far, like, the fastest theme in the game. Oh wait, I think that's it, actually. Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, we are. Yeah, so like I said, very short level. But, if you want to get points really quickly, I would suggest playing this level as much as you can. Right, so I might as well explain what Shuffle Mode is. So, the Shuffle Mode will shuffle all of the single-play levels that you've managed to unlock so far. I believe you can unlock this mode once you earn 3,000 points? So, if I go to Normal Play, it will end up shuffling all of the levels, so I don't play them in the exact same order. So normally you start out on the robot level, right? Well, right here, we ended up starting up on the uh, Lush Look Killer. Started up? No, I don't I don't think that's how English works. We start on the Lush Look Killer level. So yeah, instead of going to the robot level, we start on this one. So if we were to end the level uh, prematurely, and also what is worth mentioning here is that if you end normal mode prematurely, you still earn all of the points that you received, or you get to keep them. All of the unlock points that you collected up to that point will be capped. So if I go into normal play again with shuffle mode still enabled, it should boot me to a different level. Yeah, it boots me to Porco in the Sky. So it just kind of randomizes them. and. Just keep in mind that it only works for levels that you've unlocked in single play. Because I haven't unlocked the other three levels in single play yet, I won't be able to play them here with Shuffle Mode enabled. And again, it is worth mentioning that once you complete this level, it will then take you to a random level. Like, the level that comes after this is Build 88, but there's a chance that it will take you to Build 88, or it could just take you to a completely different level. Like, it could take you to a previous one. That's pretty much how, uh... How, uh, shuffle mode works. Yeah, also, the screen is getting, like, cluttered up with text over here. So yeah, that's pretty much how this mode works. Not really anything else to say about it. So I think I will just end it right then and there. So we're just gonna disable that for now. Next up, I am going to show the contrast effect. So these are the cool little shader effects that you can apply to the screen. They're not really useful. It's just that if you want, uh, if you want a bit of, uh, 
color or, like, different color effects flying around on the screen if you want to make your eyes incredibly sore. You know, if you're the kind of person that likes setting the, uh, visual intensity to 200% in beat hazard, then these may appeal to you. So you have three different modes for the contrast effect. You have low, high, and super high. The effect is only really noticeable on super high, though, so I'm gonna show that off. So we can go and show it off in Porco in the Sky. Just, just to demonstrate this right here. So as you can see, yeah, it makes the screen very bright. That's, that's basically what it does. So it kind of alters the game's color palettes in a way. But that's the only real use it has. So it's just if you want to change the game's colors around a little bit. And it's not really useful for anything else, honestly. I can also show this off in Build 88. In Build 88, it basically enables Night Mode in this level. So yeah, it's completely pitch black with only the, uh, yeah, the explosion of, of the turrets lighting it up. There you go. They're projecting their own light onto the field. And you kind of are as well, because you can see you're kind of leaving, leaving around light points whenever you move across the screen. I wonder what this looks like in Lush Look Killer, actually. Oh, good god. Okay. It, it's very orange. Yeah, that's, that's all I really have to say about it, though. It's just extremely orange. It gives a very, like, orange tinge to the level. What about Root of the Heart? Does this make it look better? Oh god, everything's all red now. So it looks a lot more like the inside of a heart. And finally, we can show this off on Robot. Uh, yeah, it just makes the... Just makes the level look a lot more blue. What is interesting about the Robot level in particular is that you see all these, like, uh, rectangular prisms moving around in the, the background. Well, those... First of all, those only move around when your ship moves around. And also, I don't think I've even mentioned yet that your ship is this, like, little little white square that you're controlling. But what is interesting is that the background in the robot level is procedurally generated as well. It changes every single time you play it. Like, for instance, right here, there's barely any background. Yeah, the background only appears when I go over this way now. Actually, I think I'm gonna disable the contrast effect so you can- you guys can see this a lot more clearly. Yeah, so keep note of the, uh, layout of the rectangular prisms right here. Then when I exit the level, and I go back into it, it should be different. Yeah, see, the lighting is completely different now. And they light up a lot, a lot more differently. Oh yeah, see, they're all like sideways on the, uh, like the very edges of the screen. So that's a nice little touch. It seems like the backgrounds are procedurally generated for the robot level. In fact, I think they're procedurally generated for every level, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this game was designed with procedural generation in mind. Again, kind of like Kenta Cho's shoot'em ups. Of course, in most of these levels, you fight the exact same enemies, but the pattern in which they spawn is usually not the same. Like, unless you're playing the Lush Look Killer level, which I believe is not random aside from the flashing robots, then every enemy spawns in a different location every single time. You always fight the same enemies, but they come at you from different locations on the field, if that makes any sense. So they're kind of procedurally generated in that way. Now, you also have these other levels right here called Bits of Fury, Earthworm, and So Many Ways. Now, So Many Ways you can only unlock by reaching the level in normal play, which I haven't been able to do yet, and I likely will never be able to do. But to tell you guys the truth, I was only planning on showing the first five levels in this video, because I felt like I wouldn't have time to show off the three other levels that are available in the game. And I think I gave you guys a pretty good idea as to the overall gist of this game. Just a very abstract shoot-em-up that takes a lot of inspiration from other shoot-em-ups of its kind. Surprisingly, Sony decided to pick it up and publish it on the PS3. And actually, that- I, I want to bring up another weird thing that I discovered in the PC port of the game. I'm almost convinced that this is a direct port of the PS3 version, because I was searching around in the game's files yesterday, and I managed to find this folder called Japan Warning Screens, and this folder contains warning screens for what appears to be the Japanese PS3 version of Everyday Shooter. And I'll show them on screen right here. So you have PlayStation 3 warning screens in a PC game. I don't know about you, but that's really weird to me. So if I had to guess, this is probably a direct port of the PS3 version, because why would these warning screens be in here? What's even more bizarre is that the Japanese loading screens are in here. I'm not sure why. I would think that maybe the English warning screens would have been included, but I don't know, that, that's even more strange. I don't know, man. Every 
everything about this game is surreal to me. The fact that Sony technically owns it and it got a PC release, we're basically playing a Sony game on PC. I'm not sure if this is the first time it's ever happened, it kind of feels like it might have been. And thinking about it now, I guess it's not too surreal that you can play Sony games on PC, I mean... PlayStation 1 and 2 emulators have been around for a long time. So last but not least, I would like to show you guys the notes page. So these are the notes that Jonathan Mack wrote down. I'm not sure why he decided to implement them in the game, but you can kind of see the uh, main inspiration as to, or, or basically the reason why he wanted to create Everyday Shooter. So I'm going to read it here very quickly. In the spring of 2005, I started work on what I called the new game. It was supposed to provide maximum replayability and gameplay depth through ingenious game design innovations, but instead, it was a complicated mess of rules and controls that were neither fun nor understandable. Somehow I lost myself in a ridiculous concoction of self-indulgent, games are art, theory, innovation, wankery. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned near the beginning of the video, the guy who made this game is Canadian, so the fact that he uses the word wankery here is just hilarious. I mean, the fact that I'm even playing a video game with the word wankery in it is just hilarious in general. I don't know if these notes were in the PS3 version, but moving on. Truth is, the only things that mattered were the games that inspired me to make games in the first place. Thus began my journey back into the roots of my gaming youth, the top-down shoot-em-up. From the classic shooters of yore to today's modern interpretations, I studied the works until I realized that even the simplest of things can be the most beautiful of things. Armed with this little piece of knowledge, I finally understood how to make the game that I truly wanted to make. A few months later, Everyday Shooter was born. I owe a lot to the inspirational work of Kenta Cho, Kanta Matsuhisa, also known as Omega, he's the guy who made every extend, Tetsuya Mizuguchi, who created Luminous, and countless others in the freeware community. If this game is worth anything, it is because it was built on the shoulders of those giants. I hope so dearly that I can repay my debt to them by inspiring someone else out there to create something great. Have fun and good game, Jonathan Mack. I mean, to be honest, these notes kind of echo my sentiments when it comes to shoot 'em ups as well, because I mean, I feel like I might have mentioned this in one of my older videos, but... A long time ago, I really did not care for top-down shoot-'em-ups. They were probably one of the least interesting video game genres to me, but after I stumbled upon some of the games that all of these guys made, because I have played Every Extend Extra and Luminous, and as a matter of fact, I did a video on Every Extend Extra a couple years ago, and I also played the Luminous 2 demo in that video for a short while, and Kenta Cho, I mean, I've covered so many of that guy's games on my channel in the past, Parsec 47, R. Rootage, and Taurus Trooper are by far my favorites, but I've covered way more of his games than just that. I think I covered like at least 10 or 15 of his games, and he has way more. And actually, I guess I could throw in Treasure in there as well, because their shoot 'em up Ikaruga is like one of the coolest games I've ever seen in my entire life. I owe my appreciation to top down shoot 'em ups to those guys, because they made me realize what I had been missing out on for the past 15 years. Because, I mean, shoot-'em ups have pretty much everything that I've always wanted in a video game. You know, fast-paced, arcade-style action. Why I despised that genre so much before then is completely beyond my comprehension. So I'm glad that there is at least one game dev here in Canada that shares pretty much the same interests in games as I do. This second page is just showing uh, Jonathan Mack's high scores for each individual level. As you can see, he's infinitely better at the game than I am, which I guess is not surprising because he made the damn game. And then these next few pages are just like credits thanking various people, credits going to uh, Sony Computer Entertainment America, and even Santa Monica Studio, which again is even more surprising because for those of you who don't know, Santa Monica Studio is the specific Sony studio that developed the God of War series. Again, seeing their credits in a PC game is just mind-blowing to me. And then you have more Sony credits right here, and yeah, you even see right here, Everyday Shooter is copyright 2008 Sony Computer Entertainment America. It's a Sony game. On PC. It feels really strange. The fact that this game even exists. Like, seriously. Anyway, I think I'm gonna stop gushing over that now, so I think this is where I'm going to end the video, guys. So that's really all I wanted to talk about regarding Everyday Shooter. Interesting little shoot 'em up. Extremely surprised that Sony got a hold of it. I mean, this game is highly unlike anything that Sony or even Santa Monica Studio would ever put out. I still enjoy it for what it is. Like I said, you're probably not going to be spending too much time playing this if you choose to pick it up. 
A an average play session might last you maybe a half hour at most, but you probably won't get more time out of it. Because admittedly, that is kind of the problem with shoot 'em ups the fact that a lot of them have this emphasis on fast-paced arcade action, they're not able to hold your attention for too long. The keyboard controls are kind of awkward in my opinion, but then again, this game was initially designed to be played with a PlayStation 3 controller, so if you have any sort of gamepad, then I would highly recommend using that instead. I mean, this game was designed to be played on a gamepad anyway, so you should just be using it, regardless of whether or not you're playing it on console or PC. I love the art style, I especially love the music, because, like I said, the, the music reminds me a lot of the sort of alt-rock anthems that I grew up listening to back in the day. Although I will admit, the audio quality of the music seems to vary at times. Like, sometimes it sounds very clear, but other times it sounds incredibly distorted for some reason. Also, the fact that a guitar note plays every time you kill an enemy, it can kind of cause the audio to peak very badly at times, especially on the Root of the Heart level. Because that's something I wanted to mention about the Root of the Heart level. The fact that everything explodes all at the same time, it causes like 20 guitar notes to play at the same time as a result, and... Oh god, it peaks so damn badly. I don't know, the audio quality doesn't seem to be consistent with the music, or even the sound effects for that matter. Not only that, but when it's showing you those tutorials about the points, when there's a lot of points that drop at the same time, sometimes the screen can get cluttered up with text. But that's only if you haven't picked up a point by that time. You can especially see that on Porcos in the Sky. Of course, you'd probably never see that unless you're using Shuffle Mode. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all the rambling that I plan on doing for this video, so... Final verdict, everyday shooter, is it worth playing? Well, if you're into shoot 'em ups or twin stick shooters, I would say yes. But like I said though, it's not the best shoot 'em up ever made, in my opinion. I would still say that Geometry Wars is way better than this, but I still enjoy this game just as much. And I honestly don't give a crap if it's like 11 years old. By the way, Everyday Shooter did celebrate its 11 year anniversary just uh, yesterday actually, at the time I'm recording this. I didn't intend to record this video on its anniversary, that just sort of happened. But yeah, go ahead and pick it up regardless. I would still recommend it for die-hard shoot-em-up aficionados. Links are in the description as always if you want to purchase this game on console, PC, or the handheld version that came out on PSP, and is backwards compatible with Vita, I think. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's playable on Vita. Anyway, thank you guys as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later!